Hi, I watched the second season of Heartstopper, and here's my review. This is the direct continuation of season 1 after Nick came out to his mother. If you've watched my review of season 1, you know that I defended Imogen in this video and... I knew she wasn't so bad. Well, she kind of disappointed me having a crush on Ben. Like, Ben, of all people. Couldn't it be someone else, really? Uh, so it kind of disappointed me that she would have a crush on him. But... In the end, how it turns out, how she breaks up with him in front of everyone is very satisfying. And yeah, I just knew she wasn't that bad. She's just a typical teenage girl, I want to say. And by the way, that breakup scene it was very kind of satisfying, but at the same time surprising to see Harry defending Imogen. Yeah, very surprising, but very satisfying at the same time. If if you get this kind of feeling I had. Now, concerning Ben, I have to say that I still don't like him. He's done terrible things to Charlie, so I still don't like him. And when he apologizes, I think it's okay that Charlie doesn't accept his apology and that he decides to not forgive him for what is done to him. So this I completely understand. If it was me, I think I'm too nice of a person, so probably I would have said, yeah, it's okay, because I'm too kind of a person, I think. But I completely understand Charlie, and I think it's logical in the continuity of everything, so there's this. But I want to contrast, and it's not going to be to everyone's liking, but I did kind of like Ben's apology. To me, it felt very sincere, and I did feel for him a bit at this moment, because at the end of the day, like I just said, I can't forgive him for what he's done to Charlie, because he's been very bad to him. So this... I can't. But at the same time, he is someone who can't come out. Like, he's just too scared of coming out. And so he's repressing who he is, basically. So I did feel a bit bad for him. And the animation at this moment, the LGBT, if I can say, wave coming towards him and him turning around, not embracing who he is. Uh, this was very strong. And yeah, I did feel for him at this moment. That's the end point. So like I said, I know it's not going to be to everyone's perspective and perception but maybe again it's because I'm too nice I don't know but I did feel a bit for him at this moment now I don't really have anything to come back on Darcy and Tara I think they are still cute like in season one they are very they have a healthy relationship as well just like Nick and Charlie in my opinion um, but I want to say that I like Darcy a lot more in this season. I think it's because we know some of her background, we get to know a bit of who she is, where she comes from, and because of that, she seems a bit less like the crazy type, uh, the crazy extroverted type, a type that I'm not necessarily very comfortable with. And so in season one, I had a bit of trouble connecting with her. I didn't like her that much. But knowing a bit more about her background in this season, I got to like her a lot more. And yeah, from what we saw, it made me a lot more interested in her as well, because I felt like I wanted to see more of what was going on with her. Now, like I just said, Charlie and Nick are just as green flag as Tara and Darcy, in my opinion. They are just so cute together, overwhelmingly cute, I have to say. I was scared going into season two, or knowing about season two, I was scared it would introduce a lot of drama, um, and drama between Charlie and Nick. So this was a worry of mine, but I'm so glad this doesn't happen. There is a bit of drama, a bit of things happening, but it has nothing to do uh, with the relationship between Nick and Charlie and I'm very glad for that because yeah I feel like usually this is what would happen after they happily got together the drama between the two of them would happen and so I'm so glad this doesn't happen and yeah I enjoyed that so so much. In this season I think Nick puts way too much pressure on himself. 
he absolutely wants to come out and in a sense I can understand I can completely understand wanting to be natural and wanting to be who you want to be exactly uh, in the open not having to hide anything so this is something I can completely understand but on the other hand I think he's pushing himself a bit too much because he's clearly not completely ready at the time when he pushes himself too much. He's not completely ready and you, you know he wants to do it for Charlie, basically. I think it's the end word, it's that he wants to do it for Charlie, but he has to be ready as well. And so coming out to everyone comes out when it comes out in the end. I not sure it was ready but it took the plunge anyway and everything went for the best after that so it's not really a problem but yeah i just feel like nick put way too much pressure on himself in this season uh, regarding that for charlie i have to admit that i didn't see it coming that he would have um, eating disorder and that he would have cut himself in the past but thinking back about it and um, just yeah just thinking about it makes me realize that yeah the bullying must have been really bad it's true that they never really stopped in the drama to tell us how it was really for him how bad it was uh, they tell us he has been bullied they tell us it's been bad but they never really showed us so it can be difficult hard to imagine how how it was really for him how how it really all turned out so it surprised me but thinking about it no it's not surprising that it would have a huge impact on charlie especially given his personality and how he is um this is something I'm excited to know a bit more about in season three because I think there's going to be a third season uh, with how this season ended. So I'm pretty curious and excited to know more about this side of Charlie. Now concerning Tao and Elle, first I have to say that I like Tao a lot more in this season. He is a lot more likable when he's not being the overly protecting, protective friend. So I like him a lot more in this season and we see that he tries to get along with Nick as well. It's not always that, but you can see the progress between the two of them and I really enjoyed seeing that. So yeah, Tao a lot more likable this season. Concerning his relationship with Elle, to be honest, they just had to not overthink the whole thing. I think the first time it didn't work because they were way too overthinking it, especially Tao. Just like Nick, I think Tao put way too much pressure on himself when he wanted to date Elle the first time. And the second time, it happened just like that. They, they didn't have time to think about it. They didn't have time to, yeah, just think about it, overthink everything. So it just happened and this is just what needed to happen in the end. Uh, this is how it was supposed to happen between the two of them. Because they have such a close and and really nice friendship, to be honest, that things needed to go naturally. I don't know if you see what I mean, but yeah, it was the way to do it. And I'm glad they find the way in the end because they are very cute together and they are a couple I was excited to see in second season. So I've been served and I really enjoyed it. Now, finally, I want to talk about Isaac. So Isaac, I kind of guessed uh, that it was Ace. Not a romantic though. Uh, this I didn't really see it coming because I thought he would still have romantic feelings for this other guy. But I did kind of con it for Ace. And I did really like seeing an Ace character. I've been wondering for years now if I'm not Ace, but it's difficult to put a label on yourself, I feel like. Especially when you're really not sure because what if you're wrong, <laughs> actually? What if it's not true what if you're completely mistaken on what you are and especially in my case where i feel like i don't have much life experiences to compare things and yeah and really think things over a lot uh, i can't really do that because i don't have these experiences but i've been wondering for years now if i'm not ace so maybe i am but like i said i'm not sure 
So yeah, but it, it, it still felt very nice for me to have an ace character in this series, even though they don't dwell on it for too long, they don't stay on this, they don't really develop it more. Uh, I wish it was the case, but uh, it's not the case, <laughs> never mind. So I, I can kind of relate to him, even though a romantic, I'm sure, I'm certainly uh, no, I'm completely 100% certain I'm not aromantic, so this I can't really relate to it. But I was happy to see an ace character. That's what I just want to say in the end, is that I was really happy and I wish we are going to have a bit more of him and yeah, just more of him in the third season. And with this, this is all I have to say about the second season of Heartstopper. Overall, I really enjoyed it. It was very, very enjoyable. Maybe I did enjoy it a tiny bit less than season one, but really, really tiny, nothing much. I think it's because season one was really something new and the developing of the relationship between Charlie and Nick and I'm really into that. But I still enjoyed it so much and I'll be waiting for season three Hopefully we get one, normally we should get one, and so I'm waiting for that uh, with impatience. But other than that, don't hesitate to tell me your own thoughts about this second season. Did you like it? Did you not? Were you surprised by Harry? Were you surprised by Ben? Tell me all about it. And with this, i see you in my next video. Bye bye!